Hi everyone. So for today, we'll be working on the solution for our problem set 2, which is Caesar. So in this problem set, we'll be working on Caesar's algorithm, where we want to encrypt some plain text based on a key. So the user will be prompted for a key and an input, which will be a string of text. So this plain text will then be encrypted by shifting each letter down by some number of places, and the number of places to shift down each letter is based on the key that the user had input. So for example, if the user inputs the key as 1, and the plain text as hello, let's see how to get the cipher text. So first, we'll look at the position of each letter of the word hello in the alphabet. So that is, H is the 8th letter, E as the 5th letter, L as the 12th letter, and O as the 15th letter. So if the key is 1, we will shift down each letter by 1 position. So shifting H down by 1 letter, it becomes I, E becomes F, L becomes M, O becomes P. So the resulting ciphertext will then be I, F, M, and P. And you can see that the letters will still be uppercase and there's no change to the punctuation mark, which is the exclamation mark. So now, what happens if the plain text is Z and the key is 2? So Z is the last letter of the alphabet, which is in the 26th position. So this means we actually need to look back to the start of the alphabet and go down two places. So in this case, the ciphertext for Z is B. So now let's look at another example. So what happens if the plain text is F and the key is 32, which is more than the total number of alphabets? So since 32 is greater than 26, this means we will actually loop once around the alphabet and come back to F. So taking 32 minus 26, which equals to 6, this means we need to go down 6 positions to find the cipher text of F, which would be L, and L is the 12th letter of the alphabet. So for the solution that we're looking for for this problem set, what we actually need is the formula that will show us the absolute position of the cipher text in the alphabet. So we will take the position of the plain text, in this case, F equals to the 6th position, so 6 plus 32 minus 26 equals to 12, which is the position of the cipher text. So now, what happens if the plain text is Q and the key is 45? Applying the same logic, we will take the position of the plain text, which is 17, plus the key, which is 45, minus 26 equals to 36, right? So that means we've already looked around the alphabet once, and now we are back at Q. And now, since the remainder is 36, which is still greater than 26, we can look one more round around the alphabet again. So taking 36 minus 26 equals to 10. So now what we need to do is to go down 10 positions down from the alphabet Q, and the corresponding letter is G. So this is how we get the formula that is shared, which is cipher text equals to the plain text plus key modulo 26. We've already discussed the modulo function in detail in the previous problem sets. So this formula will give you the position of the cipher text in the alphabet. So now that we understand the overall formula, let's look at some of the parameters to consider. Punctuation marks are not rotated, and the case of the original text is preserved. So if you are keying in an upper case, it will remain as the upper case in the cipher text, and lower cases will remain as lower cases in the cipher text. So now that we understand the background and parameters of the problem set, let's look at the structure of our code. So firstly, we need to check that the user provides exactly one command line argument, and this would be the key. Then we need to check that the key is an integer, followed by prompting the user for the plain text and printing the resulting cipher text. So let's work on the first step. We need to check that only one line argument is keyed in. And for that, we will use argxi, which stands for argument count. So what does that mean, and how do we count it? So if we run dot slash Caesar, the argument count is 1. Running dot slash Caesar 10 would mean that the argument count is 2. And running dot slash Caesar 10 followed by 20 would mean that the argument count is 3. For this case, as long as arc C is not 2, the system will print the error. So let's put this into C. So now let's start with our usual header. So that would be include CS50, include standard IO. Include string set. Okay. Then we will have our header which will be int main um, int arc c string arc v. Okay. So for the explanation for this header, there's actually a one page summary done by the CS50 team. I've actually put the link for this document in the video description below, so do check it out. 
So now let's work on the first part where we want to validate that there will be a one command line argument. So as discussed, let me just write a comment on what we are doing. So check that there is one command line argument. So if arc c does not equal to 2, right, then we will print usage. Okay, and then we will stop the program from running. Uh, or else, if it's okay, let's just put a success message first. Okay, so now let's try to compile this and see how it goes. So we'll make Caesar dot slash Caesar. Let's say my argument is uh, I put two input. So it rejected it. So let's try again. If I put only dot slash Caesar, again it rejects. Now let me try to put in um, just one command line argument and success. So this would be the first part that we're looking for. Next, we need to validate that the key is an integer. So based on the command line argument that you ran, we need to make sure that the second argument vector is an integer. So let's look at the difference between argument count and argument vector. So if you run dot slash Caesar, the argument count is 1, and arc v0 is Caesar. If you run dot slash Caesar 10, the argument count is 2 because there's two separate inputs, and arc v0 represents Caesar, which is your first input. And arc v1 represents the second input, which is 10. So since our key is the second input, then key equals to arc v1. And we need the system to run through every character of arc v1 to validate that it is a digit. So remember, arc v1 is a string. And each character within arc v1 will hence be represented by arc v1 i. So the system will reject the key if any character is not a digit. So we'll represent this by bang is digit arc v1 i. Okay, so after we validate that the key consists only of digits, we can then convert it to an integer using the function a toy. So let's put this in C. So now what we'll do is that we will declare that there will be a key. So we will define the key and we will say that there will be a string called key equals to arc v1. Right? And then now what we want to do is that we want to check that the input is a digit. Okay? So we will run through every character of this key. So we have done this previously before, so I think this will be familiar to us. So for int i equals to 0, and as long as i is less than the length of the string of arc v1, which is our key, and we'll go through every letter. Right? So now what we want to do is that we're going to say if it is not a digit, so we'll re represent this with bang is digit uh, vi, where we go through every letter, so it should be 1i, right? And then after that, we will print the error message if it's not a digit. And then also, we will return 1 where we stop the program if it's an error, right? And then if it's not, we will actually print the success message and then the next line we also want to just reprint out the key okay and then if you remember earlier on we actually had a success message here so now that we are progressing on to the next section i'm just going to remove this okay so now let's try to compile this okay so let's just try if what happens if we put um, something that is not a digit. So let's try to put 5x. You can see it shows that there's an error. So now let's just try what happens if we put two inputs instead. Likewise, there's an error. So let's try again where now we actually just put in a key that is an integer. So let's try 23. You see it says success and it, put, and it prints out the key again. So that would be for this section. Next, we will prompt the user for the plain text. This is quite straightforward. So let's put this straight away into C. So now let's look at this. We will get plain text from user. So what we're going to say that there will be a string called plain text and we will get a string from the user. So get underscore string plain text. Okay, and that will be how we will prompt the user for the plain text. Now for the last portion, we need to convert this plain text into ciphertext and print it out. So to print a ciphertext, we will use the formula that we had discussed earlier on, where ciphertext equals to plain text plus key modulo 26. Now, when referring to letters in C, we will use the ASCII chart. We can see that the uppercase A to Z is between 65 to 90, and lowercase A to Z is between 97 and 122. 
But remember, earlier on when we were breaking down the formula, it was based on A being in the first position of the alphabet and Z as the 26th position of the alphabet. So when applying this formula into our program, we need to calibrate the positions of each character of the plain text back to being between 1 and 26. So to do this, we actually need to modify the formula that we have been working on. So for example, if the character is uppercase F and the key is 32, we will take ciphertext equals to plain text plus key minus 65 modulo 26. So the system will then calculate that the ciphertext position in the alphabet is 12. So to put this back into the ASCII chart, we will then need to add back 65 into what we have. And that would be how we find the position of the ciphertext, which would be 76, and the corresponding letter is L. So now, applying the same principle and formula back, if the character is lowercase, now we will actually minus 97 instead to find the absolute position of the ciphertext in the alphabet. And then to find its corresponding value on the ASCII chart, we will need to add back 97. Okay? And then lastly, for the final part, if the character is neither uppercase nor lowercase, for example, if it's like a punctuation mark, we will keep the character without making any changes. And now, let's wrap this up by putting it into C. So moving on to the last part, this is what we need to do. So firstly, we need to convert the key to an integer. So I'm going to say that there will be an integer called k, and uh, using the atoy function, we'll declare it as such. So now because I'm using the atoy function, what I need to do is that I need to go back up here and also include this, right? Okay, so now moving on, what happens now is that after we get a plain text, what we want to do is that we want to print the cipher text. So let's do this first. We want the system to print cipher text, okay? And then now what happens is that we're going to be working on everything that will come after ciphertext. And that is where uh, we want to do that. So we want to um, obtain the ciphertext for this following section. Right. So for int i. Likewise now, as long as we're going to go through the entire plain text string. So we'll go through every character. Now, as discussed earlier on, if it is an uppercase, what we want to do is that we will actually print each character as we go along. So we will say that we will print a character. And now what we're going to do is that we're going to tell the system what character to print. So this is where our formula comes in. So remember, now we're going to be applying the formula that we have. So we're minus 65 first. Then remember, we will plus the key that we have worked out, and then we'll do modulo 26. And remember, after that, we actually need to add back 65. Okay? And then, else, if it is a lowercase, we are also going to do something similar now. So likewise, we will just print the character. Right, then now we will minus 97 as per what we saw on the ASCII chart just now. And then likewise again, we will do a modulo 26. And then now we need to bring it back onto the ASCII chart, so we will plus 97. Okay? And then for all other cases, for example, if it's a punctuation mark, we will actually print C and we will just keep it as the original character. Okay, and then uh, just to neaten it up, I'll just put an empty space after that. Okay, so now let's just give this a try. Let's make Caesar, right, and uh, let's try Caesar 1. Okay, then it will prompt for the plain text. So can you see that earlier on, what happens is that the success and the key is still printing out. So if you want to clean this up, we can just easily go back up here, and then we can minor take out this line. Okay, so let's just try again. Let's make Caesar, right? And then let's try Caesar 1. And let's see our plain text would be... Hello. Right, so can you see it does change into the cipher text where the uppercase remains as uppercase and the lowercase remains as lowercase and it shifted down by one position and the exclamation mark remains as it is. As it is. Okay, so now let's try again. Um, let's try Caesar 5. Let's try Hello World. Oops. So let's try Caesar 5. Let's try Hello World. This will be the ciphertext. 
And one more time, let's try something else. Let's try maybe a bigger key that we're looking at. So let's try 32. And we try be sure to drink your Ovaltine. And here would be the ciphertext. And there you go. This is the solution for problem set to Caesar. Now, if you found this solution and explanation to be helpful, do give this video a thumbs up and do subscribe to the videos as it's definitely most helpful in pushing up this video for others who might be looking for the explanation to the problem set as well. So, I will see you in the next video. Thank you!